Hello, this is Dean Phoenix continuing with my Deathmatch playthrough. Uh, I actually played this already, so if you've watched this part on Twitch, uh, you may realise that there is about an hour up that didn't have any commentary on it. So I'm just redoing that bit now, as unfortunately it went missing. So, uh, we've missed out episodes a little bit from when we first got to Velen. But what it literally is, is we came out at Hangman's Tree, went to Mulberry Dale to get this fast travel marker, and then as per my Deathmatch walkthrough, uh, we have gone to get the Hearts of Stone and the saddlebags straight away uh, to give us a bit more inventory space going forward. So you can cross over here, uh, so you come here and then cross over this bit. You don't need any pass or to have completed any missions or requests or anything like that. And you can just pass into Velen. So what we'll be doing is uh, we came to Ulnus and got the first place of power here as well. And then we'll be getting the saddle and the saddlebags here and the cow card uh, from this area here from Hearts of Stone. Just ride this whole way, just make sure you avoid any enemies. And even though this is all the Hearts of Stone territory, uh, we're able to do that and get these saddlebags right from the start if you have that expansion. So well worth doing uh, and always, you know, uh, a good thing to try and do so that you have that extra, um, extra inventory space because it's very useful. So just going to skip all of this stuff. And then make sure that we uh, do this race against the merchant and uh, make sure there's a um, horse race here and then that will mean that we're able to get the saddle first. This is a live commentary Twitch playthrough so just bear with me for when I'm just putting the commentary together and I'm concentrating on playing the game as well because it's not something that I'm as used to doing. So if you just get in front of um, the rider here, even though you don't have uh, you know any... Uh, advanced saddles or anything like that you should be perfectly able to uh, win. The only thing you just have to watch out for is there'll be a part where they um, put some barrels in front here and you just have to try and jump and avoid those and then just let your stamina build back up. Anytime the uh, Ophir Merchant catches up to you you can just block him off and uh, recover your stamina. You can actually win the entire race just by staying in front and doing it very slowly. That's actually the easiest way to win the race. But I'm a little bit impatient, so we're not going to be doing. So after I've got these saddle, uh, the saddle and the saddle bags from doing this, um, we'll just be able to carry a little bit more, and uh, it just makes the game a little bit more convenient. And you can do it all with avoiding enemies and everything else. So it's not like it's a very difficult thing to do either. So we're just going to do that first. And then we should be okay. Now I'm just about to run out of stamina, which is a slight problem. So again, just block the merchant off and then get your stamina back and sprint for the finish. So when we do this, we've got the Ophir saddle. And then the only thing I'm going to go and do is go and grab a few different, um, what's the word, uh, Gwent cards before we carry on with the Gwent as well. Always fun to do. So there's the Ophir stock saddle. And then after you've spoken to him, uh, there's a few other things you can do as well. And this is the main thing that we came for, is just to get the saddle bags there. So they have 100 inventory weight, which is very useful. And you can see a third of the Gaunt or Dim Darkness cards there, uh, which are also useful. And you can sell these other saddles, because they're just taking up inventory weight and not really needed. So after we've done that, we're going to equip the saddle bags and the Ophir saddle. And we'll be in good shape um, there. We can also sell some of the junk items that you don't need. Again, just to clear up a bit of inventory space. Okay, so after we've done that, and just accept this Hearts of Stone quest, but you don't have to do it right now, so that's absolutely fine. And then we're going to be making my way back to doing all the regular stuff. Now, one of the things I also uh, nearly always do when I first get to Velen is um, I want to be oh, not doing that for a start is I want to be using the skill points that we've got um, because we reached level 4 right at the end uh, just before Vizima uh, put 3 skill points to arrow deflection and um, that means that we've also opened up um, the next level uh, as well um, until I get this uh, extra skill slot here at level 6 I'm actually just going to go straight to using undying because uh, that will be very useful for a no armor playthrough. So I just put the skills in there. I will use arrow deflection uh, and put it in this slot when we get to uh, level uh, when we get to level six. But for now, just going to get undying. So we've got one point on un in undying, and that will probably prove pretty. Um, but the other thing I want to do is go and get the other places of power that you can get in Velen. 
and put those into undying so we have more points into it so it's more effective and I'll be doing that after I've just got these Gwent cards and the other stuff that you can get in Hearts of Stone so I'm just going to ride around this way first and head to Brunich and then when I've got the Gwent cards that I want from Brunich uh, we can just continue and get the places of power so this is the next put that notice board there and then I'll be heading to the merchant in Karsten who sells uh, all of the Gwent cards for Hearts of Stone and you can get some really good ones from him as well so this is normally a part uh, that you would only do in Hearts of Stone but as you can see uh, you can loot these areas now and you might as well as you come and get the cow card the cow card's an interesting one uh, it's a good little addition uh, to your deck early on uh, isn't to get it now uh, you might as well because it's free and easy to do so we're just going to grab all of this stuff and the cow card uh, is in the barn so some things here you'll get um, and they're much more useful to have now than they would be later in the game when they'll be pretty inconsequential but right now we need all the stuff we can get so we can make good use of them by looting all this stuff now okay so we're just going to climb up into the barn here and grab the cow card and again if you've watched my video about setting up your Gwent deck early this is one of the things that I recommend doing in this video and again it's all free stuff and easy to do so might as well grab it if you have the expansion we get plenty of Alkahest and Dwarven Spirit which will help us out because we'll be using potions quite a lot uh, throughout this no Okay. Nice triglav rune stone as well there. And an amethyst that we can sell later. So there's some good stuff to pick up there. And it's quite a useful little thing to do. Now all of this stuff we're just going to ignore for now because we don't want to be uh, making use of Hearts of Stone quests yet because they'll be too high level. So I'm just going to carry on and ride Roach all the way back to where we need to be. Uh, it'll actually be a little quicker to fast travel back to Ulna, so I'm just going to do that first. Okay, so the next place you want to be heading is to this merchant camp here, uh, where you can speak to the guy who's obsessed with you. Good little um, going cards from him as well. That's always useful. Okay, so now we're back here. Uh, again, just take any opportunity you can to get the geese. You can get um, healing items from them and also sometimes feathers, which you can use much, much later um, to be able to create rune stones and things when you're making them yourself instead of having to buy them. Also uh, get some pork and pig hides there from the pigs, which is really useful because pork's one of the uh, higher healing items that does 80 per second instead of 50. That's always good, always useful. And now I'm just going to ride Roach back to Karsten. As I was saying before, you want to be careful with these fields and things because sometimes they will have higher level rates that you would need to avoid, uh, like just there. Okay, so we're going to ride until we get to this merchant camp here. And again, there'll just be a couple of things to pick up, but the main draw is speaking to uh, and getting some good cards from him. Now, if you don't have Hearts of Stone, these are not exclusive cards to Hearts of Stone, other than the one that you win from him, uh, and the Gauntro Dim cards. But the Gauntro Dim cards are very useful early on, so if you have Hearts of Stone, you might as well make use of those now by coming to visit him. Uh, and also, the cards that you can buy from him that you can get elsewhere... Uh, are the cards like the second catapult and things like that and uh, they're extremely useful to have early on as well everything from him first and then play him at Gwent afterwards okay 
So just gonna buy everything from him first. It's mainly they go into a card and they catapult that I want. Um, but never mind, always a good idea to sell stuff uh, there as well. Just see if there's anything worth selling to him. He gives you reasonable prices for things. He doesn't give the highest prices of uh, everybody, but uh, you can sell a few things to him because he, he's not one of these merchants that gives terrible prices for stuff. Um, just going to hold on to a few of the higher value items and sell them later. And then we can play him. So we're just going to add these new cards to the deck. Some of them are extremely useful. So you've got the three Gaunter cards, the Cow and the Catapult. And that lets us take a few of the weaker cards out of our deck as well. Don't really need any more. Just keep it as near to 22 as possible whilst keeping all of the stronger cards in. Just take out those Siege Expert cards and get it back to 22 and then we're good to go. Okay so we've got a Spy here and um, the one of the Gaunter cards which is what you want and you always want to use the Gaunter cards before anything else. So if I use the Spy here it could prove to be a waste because it will pull another Gaunter card into my hand which I don't want. You only want one of the Gaunter cards and then use that and it pulls the other two in so that you have 12 strength straight away which is really high and that's very useful. And then after that uh, you want to use the uh, cards there. So uh, we can try this game or I can try and win it outright. So I'm going to win it outright. Uh, just so that I can get the extra card from the Northern Realms uh, bonus and use that right after. I should be... Hopefully I get a Biting Frost from this and that would make it a lot easier, but we'll see. No, didn't. Never mind. They're going to decoy that again. So what I may do is I'm quite tempted to uh, just pass on this here. Um, but I'm just going to try and double this up first and get him to use some more cards. And then win after that. In the third round. So that's made them use up a good chunk of their good cards and the Commander's Horn and the Leader ability. Uh, so now I can safely pass and I should be able to win just with Brute Force by using the Leader ability to double these. We'll see how that goes. Oh, that's going to hurt. That really hurts. Is it looking a bit too strong right now? But we'll see. I think I'm going to have to take a risk and try and get the uh, spy card instead of decoying a couple of the catapults. Yeah, so no chance of winning this one, sadly. So I'll have to play him again. He does have quite a strong deck, so there is the possibility that you will lose even if you get pretty strong cards. Welcome. 
Try and win those back. Yeah, so he does have some very powerful cards you've got to watch out for. And there's nothing you can really do about it if he gets those cards. He's got to try it as best you can. So I could either double up the row there uh, on the bottom using the leader card or I could play two cards to win which is what I'm going to do. Then try and win with the leader ability after. So not the best draw for that card but we'll just have to see how it goes. And he's going to decoy back the spire which is a problem. That's definitely a problem. He's played that first, whereas if he'd kept that, then he could have scorched my higher scoring ones, which would have been a problem. So it just depends what cards he has left. Should be alright if that's his next one to play. And he should have taken off replayed it, but the AI doesn't tend to do that. That's what I would have done. So he managed to win anyway because they misplay that one, so get those crowns back. Break even there and get the shrew card. Okay, so now the next thing is I just want to go and do some places of power um, to get the bonuses uh, from uh, getting more points put into Undying, so I'll do that next. So that'll mean visiting a few of these, and then we'll carry on with the Baron's Quest after that. So I'm just going to fast travel um, again back to the Baron's Quests. Just need to find where that marker was. And then we'll be carrying. Okay. Now it is a little bit annoying because when I'd done this the first time uh, on the part where the audio had actually skipped out, I actually got a Divana Runestone, which is exactly what I wanted from a Steel Sword. So I'm going to have to try and see if that is still there this time. Of the things that you get will be randomised, but I think they are normally set uh, from the start of the game, or definitely from the first time that an area loads in. I've never tested that theory, but there are definitely things that are different uh, each time through the game, and the placement of the alchemy recipes, like the bombs and potion recipes, are randomised depending on where they are. They'll be in a different chest in each playthrough, uh, which does make it a little bit tricky if you rely on a certain one. 
and you're trying to get a certain uh, use all the time or something like that that can be very difficult to do because there's no way of doing it because it's randomized so that's an interesting thing to just bear in mind Roach getting herself caught on a building, nothing new there. Okay, so we're going to ride here first. Then we're going to continue with the story mission, which I think is this town here. And then we can grab the place of power from up here before we do that. Just going to grab this side quest here and do this as well. Because you get a good amount of crowns for this uh, for an early quest, so that's quite a good one to do. I'll just do this first. Okay, so just going to use Tony Owl there because um, here we're actually fighting different enemies at the same time, which is uh, actually quite rare. Um, but when it does happen, it's quite tricky because you need the Silver Sword for the Rot Fiend and you need the Steel Sword for the Dogs. So you got to keep your distance there. Rot Fiends are extremely dangerous, so always make sure you have Quinn up around them. He says as he kills one without having... Do as I say, not as I do. What are you doing, Roach? She's a nutter. Okay, so we're just going to quickly do this side quest, and there's a power, as I said before, just so I can add them to the undying skill. And again, I'm trying to use skills that are a little bit different than I would normally do uh, in this playthrough. Thunderbolt as well there, so we can start using that now as well. Ecophage yeah, sure like oil. Use Thunderbolt for a bit of extra damage. So you can tend to alternate between Tawny Owl and Thunderbolt in these uh, normal battles and make your alcohol go even further there because you get three uses of Tawny Owl and three uses of Thunderbolt per alcohol use. See that was pretty easy, so now for a shot of Igni. I love that there are so many different ways that you can play this game as well. Uh really, really interesting tactics you can use. There are some things that make death even death march very, very easy. Uh, um obviously with a no armor playthrough, you avoid him a good chunk of those. Like particularly uh, Griffin School techniques and the starting armor uh, makes White Orchard a lot easier because of the regeneration and the extra sign intensity from Griffin School techniques, which makes a huge difference really because um, that stamina regeneration lets you keep Quen up and then use Igni more often as well, uh, which makes a big difference. And the 20% uh, sign intensity boost is a lot higher than you have at the start of the game, relatively speaking, and gives you a better chance of burning things. So it makes um, White Orchard just easier in general. That is very useful. Now the wild dogs and things you want to avoid when you're just um, roaming around because you don't get good money or alchemy skill uh, ingredients off them or anything like that. They just give bog standard stuff like hides and dog tallow, which you only need a couple of. It's not really a big deal. So try and get some fire damage on these guys. Keep Quen up. And 
and try and fight them one at a time if at all possible. And when they're all dead, that's easy to deal with. I actually meant to agree with him then, that's what I did last time. So hopefully I've not messed up uh, being able to confront the priest and get those crowns. I've never actually done it that way. That was an accident, so never mind. Let's go and see what he has to say for himself anyway. Quite a way to ride here, so I'm just going to ride on Roach, obviously, instead of running on foot. A lot of Neckers to fight here, but I don't want to do it just yet, just while they out-level me a little bit. I'll make a note of that, just so I can come back later. Because they're a very good source of uh, green and blue mutagens. Uh, which can be very useful, especially earlier on when we don't have any red mutagens. So, just something to bear in mind for a little later. Just going to ride right past these dogs again. Kill if you love the guards, yeah, yeah. I'll come back for that later as well. Ah, you don't get to fight him, that's annoying. Oh well. Never mind. You actually get 200 crowns if you uh, believe the other guy. Um, but it's not worth me or anything, so I'll just have to make do. So yeah, you, sh you should sort of believe the other guy instead, and then you get to fight those guys, and you get 200 crowns after you beat them, which is a lot early in the game. See, I've only got 225 there, so it would have pretty much doubled the money I've got, but I can easily live without it, so not a major thing. And now we want to be carrying back on with the normal quests. Need to be riding round to the right. Fair few drowners there, just for the stuff you can get for beating them. If there's a fair few things, um, it can be worth using both both potions. Punch a drowner, why not? Obviously, there's a lot of enemies uh, in this group, so we want to be making as quick work of them as possible. Come on. 
and they drown. So nothing amazing there, but probably worth the one alcohol alcohest it'll be for me meditating. And carry on. You need drown the tongs to uh, make some of the lower level potions, um, particularly Maribof, the um, killer whale potion. Uh, you need drown the tongs for that, so always worth trying to take them out if they're about a similar level to you. Missing Brother is one of the uh, high level quests. It's a contract where you take on Harisi. And you can do that at a much higher level if normal. I'm just going to check the audio and just check it's coming through okay. Just bear with me. Seems to be coming through more or less okay. Okay, so we're just going to go through this. And try and avoid the conflict. Just skipping all this stuff because obviously I've played the game already. Don't want to be sitting through all the cutscenes myself, to be perfectly honest. Okay, so basically we've got to go and find this guy Hendrik and again we'll just be carrying on and then I'm going to try and get some places of power. Now it's actually funny in the first time um, the first time I was playing this through uh, yesterday before I realized that the audio was missing, uh, my commentary was missing, I was saying that I wasn't going to get because I didn't have any slots for it but I was thinking about it afterwards and actually I would prefer to have Undying uh, as opposed to the arrow deflection uh, early on and then I can just slot arrow deflection again um, when I've got to level 6 so I'd rather have Undying for now and I'd rather have 5 points in that so I am going to go and get the places of power before I carry on with Kira's quest or the Baron's quest and conveniently there is one reasonably close to here after we've done this first part of the quest so this one here there are two things this one's the Griffin Steel Sword uh, or one of the griffin sword diagrams, I can't remember which, it's guarded by a level 14 wyvern or, um, so we'll come back for that later uh, but we can grab the place of power right after we've done this uh, part here and you can do that with avoiding most conflicts so we should be fine there so I'll go ahead and do that and then get some of the other places after Roach struggles to get through that demon bush Again, dogs are always um, quite difficult, so whilst alcohol is pretty plentiful, which it is through most of the game, I want to make um, just making good use of the potions so I can deal with them quicker. Okay, so take those out, and Gormir will heal us back as well. Okay, 
So we're just going to grab these things here. And see, this is why I avoid, uh, most of the time, avoid fighting the dogs for if there's no specific reason, because they don't give good rewards or anything like that. Okay, so just going to skip through all this again, then we'll go get the place of power. Alright, so after we've done this bit, uh, you'll get the choice of doing going to Midcops and doing the Witch's quest, which is to find actually to find Kira Metz, or you can go and do the Baron's quest. Now, the Baron's quest will be a little more difficult. And the main reason for that will be because um, I won't have the starting armor and that 18% elemental resistance does actually reduce the damage that the uh, wraiths do to you. So it does bear in mind, it does bear thinking about. Just need to grab Roach. And on we go. So just going to go up here, grab this place of power first. Ride past all the enemies if I can. Although I may have to stop and fight some harpies. Which, unless they are much higher level than me, should be pretty doable. If they're Red Skull, I'll just have to ride past them. There is actually um, a chest that will have um, something in. Which I would prefer to be able to grab. But it depends on what... see what level they are. Seven's not too bad, although there are a fair few of them, and I don't have any potions, so we'll have to see how it goes. It may take some patience. Not red school, so eventually I should be able to take them down. Just keep going up. And get the poisoning on them from the viper swords, which is useful. Okay, so without the... Uh, I really should have meditated first to get my potions back, but... I'll just have to be a little more patient instead. Just keep dodging and keep going up. Because they can do damage in a hurry. And I'll have to make sure that Gourmet's making up for that. Get a few hits in where possible. Got the chance to get two of them at once with uh, Igni there, so I couldn't resist. Take that one down. So they're not doing massive damage, even when they are hitting me. And Gourmet and Swallow are more than equal to it. You can get an instant kill with them sometimes if you manage to hit them just like that. I could try and use Ardnaxi to do the same thing, but uh, without having Tawny Owl, because I didn't meditate, it's not really worth the risk. And Ard's not really knocking me down for long enough to be able to do that, so if I can get this one, I should be fine. When this one comes back round, I'll kill it with Axie.
and get the instant kill on it. There is one left, but that might be just out of range, so. And I got beast oil, so well worth grabbing. So that'll be useful going forward as well. With a little bit of combat, you got to have some challenges. Make Devil's Puffball as well, which is useful for poisoning enemies, so I'm going to do that. And there are a couple of decoctions that I can make as well. Noon Wraith, not particularly useful. The Wraith decoction is actually useful. So I'm going to use that. And we can make Petri's filter as well. Go ahead and use that for a bit of extra sign intensity if the need arises. Okay, so next I just got to carry on. I will actually just meditate now though. So I have those back if needed. with that less of you blue mooches in that's quite useful because now I can combine these three get a tiny bit of extra sign intensity Get an instant kill on that one, so that makes it easier. So actually it's pretty useful for these things, if there are not too many of them about. And interestingly, you can see, because I've got the extra damage from muscle memory, the heavy hits, uh, strong attacks aren't actually doing much more damage, if any damage at all, uh, other compared to my fast hits. So the main things that strong attacks are going to be useful for is going to be for fighting things that are armoured because strong attacks are not ignore armour so I just need to make my way to where uh, the castle over there because that's where we'll get the Quen place of power and another ability point there's the wyvern but we can avoid him I am gonna get the uh, fast travel point activated just so that when I come back here I can just fast travel back when I'm at the level I want to take the wyvern on so I've got that marker on the map and I can fast travel back when I want but for now I just try and need to try and make my way down and be able to get that place of power
and jumping into the water, so... Now I've got the ability point, I want to avoid those drowners, and I definitely want to avoid the wyvern. So I'm just going to swim back. Okay, so that's another ability point there. And you can see that the um, adrenaline, each point uh, increases the effectiveness. So at the next adrenaline, uh, a next ability point, vitality will be restored with a bonus of 50% instead of 25%. Um, and as far as I'm aware, that skill used to be bugged, but it is fixed now. Uh, I do think it works now, so we'll try it out anyway. But that seems to me to be a good skill to have on a no damage, uh, no armor. Now there is a random chest on this road somewhere. But I can't remember exactly where it is, so I may have gone past it already. And it has a horse saddle in it, so if you need a horse saddle early in the game, there is a chest somewhere along this road that has it in. But I already have my horse saddle, so it's not a big deal. Just gonna ride on. I think that might be it. Yep. Saddle. So I'm just gonna take that because even though saddles are extremely heavy, you can sell them for a little bit of extra coin. Bunch of wolves here, just going to try and avoid those. Unless Roach gets stuck. Ugh. And this is why riding Roach is sometimes not the best. Never mind. <coughs> I get impatient, you should just stick to the roads really, but never mind. Okay, so from Heatherton, we're just going to make our way over to Crow's Perch. Progress the story a little bit, and then this is a power. This is the Pella's Garden. I'm just going to grab some uh, mistletoe from the cemetery here. Because that's one of these slightly rarer plants. And then carry on. So we just want the undying and then we're going to do the story quests for Kira and the Bloody Baron. And hopefully undying will give us a little bit of leeway for doing that. That was rude.
Right, so I'm just going to play this guy for Gwent first. Maybe sell a couple of things that are weighing me down. And he's got a couple of Nilfgaard cards as well. Then play him at Gwent. I think he has a pretty bad deck if I remember correctly, so should be fine there. So again, just want one of those gone to cards. And I want to use that before the spy. If at all possible, I just want to use like one of the uh, five strength cards first so that they can't scorch uh, the go on to cards altogether. Always decoy these spies wherever possible. And with him having quite weak cards we should Should easily be able to win this next round. Although I may just skip this round so I can get that Thala card back and uh, use it with the Medic afterwards. I think I will do that. So I always like to medic, medic a uh, spy card if at all possible and pull some more cards out of your deck and I'll be able to rack up some very powerful combinations with this one. In particular the fact that I'll get the type bond and the commander's horn and then I'll be able to uh, use my double my siege cards using the leader as well. And so he just doesn't have the cards to compete really. Okay. And already we've got the deck to the point where we can quite easily get 100 scores, so we'll beat most opponents, unless you're quite unlucky. Although we got a terrible random reward, that's not good. And it's for the monster deck, which you can't even use properly until usually well into Skelliger. I'm going to grab all the stuff from these houses. Again, you could make this more difficult by doing a no loot playthrough. But I think I'll stick for no armor for now. Don't want to make things too restrictive. There's loads of challenges that you could do and make it uh, like a really restrictive challenge. But uh, as I was saying in one of the comments for one of the earlier um, episodes of this playthrough um, there's a balance between making the game more challenging and making it frustratingly boring because the vanilla combat if you're avoiding using things like if you avoid using everything like bombs and signs and alchemy and all that stuff you could do it you'd be able to do is dodge and slash which would be extremely boring in my opinion so I think I'll just stick to no armor just so that I can use a balance of combat to make up for that without making it supremely boring so 
Now, uh, as I mentioned before earlier, I have done this section of the game already on this playthrough, uh, but the Twitch upload, if you watch that, is about an hour and five, and it didn't have commentary, it didn't have my voiceover on it or anything. So I was pretty disappointed from that. So I just thought I'd redo it. This is an hour is not a tremendous amount of time. Um, but one of the main things is that I got a Divana runestone in here, which is one of the places that you can randomly get a Divana runestone. So I'd be a bit disappointed if I didn't get one this time. So we'll have to see. Runestone. Is there anything else I missed? No, so I didn't get one this time, which is disappointing, but oh, never mind. Ah, it might have been the next hut, actually, that I'm thinking of. Ah, Divana Runestone, there you go. So actually it was this hut, and this is a, a place where I've got a Divana runestone a couple of other times, so it may not be um, an exact fixed drop, but I do think there's a decent chance of getting one in there. That's very useful, I'm going to put that in my sword. Just remember to equip the Ophiri saddle, if you do get that. So now that has a 3% three chan three chance to cause bleeding, as well as a 15% chance to cause poison, which is very useful for human enemies. Particularly if you're dancing around and trying not to take damage, like we are in this particular playthrough. So we're just going to carry on, skip through all this stuff. Okay, so this is getting towards the same sort of place uh, that I was at before. When doing the exploring, I will probably just nip to Novigrad to get easier access to a stash, um, which is very helpful to do. I'm going to skip through all this stuff. Okay, so basically this is the part where we get to uh, doing series section. And I think I'm just going to leave it here for this episode. So if you've made it through and watched it, thank you very much for sticking with it and everything else. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough. Uh, we're going to be doing series section next and then carrying on with the story and also getting those places of power uh, just to top up on dying before we do the Baron's missions and Kira's missions. So thank you very much. Please do leave a like, subscribe, comment if you're watching on YouTube and uh, follow me on Twitch, DemonPhoenix237, if you want to join in with the um, parts of the quests coming up and see the rest of the walkthrough. So thank you very much and please have a good day on the path.